Hello people. I'm sitting here in my car outside a garage in Kinnegad in County Westmead, right? And I'm going over to Belvedere House near Mullingar. So I'll, I'll be going on, on the M6 as if you're heading towards Galway, okay? But I'm going over to Belvedere House and you're all fairly welcome to come along. So I just pulled in here and um, I was looking for, um, I was going to get turkey, but I had to get ha ham, right? Brady's the family ham, right? Brady's family ham. So I'm not a big, I'm not a big uh, ham person really, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm after bringing a flask and uh, tea bags. So I'm just going to go, go out here now and sit over here uh, and have a cup of tea and save myself a few quid so that I can spend more money to go and more place, go to more places, right? So come on and join me over here. We'll have. Uh, a cup of tea, my friends, okay? Right, people. Look at my sandwich. This is some just brown bread here, right? This is, um, uh, let me see, Hovis granary, granary brown bread, right? So I just, I just put, I just put butter on, on, on the bread and I'm going to put some of my, how's it going? Of my uh, Brady family ham onto the uh, bread. 250 for the ham, so basically speaking, these sandwiches and tea here is only going to cost me about two, two euros fifty. Imagine that. Right, let me see if this hot water. Better be hot, my friends, it better be hot. Ah, oh, this is the life, this is the life. And lines is original bland tea, tea bags, right? Ah, uh, what can I say? What can I say? Now, where have we got the sp spoon or the knife, so to say? Knife. Brady's ham. I shall put another slice on it. Some milk. So this is saying here, having more protein milk, only 1% fat. Okay, let me try this. Oh yeah. Cheers people, cheers. That's lovely bread in the sandwich. Hovis granary brown bread. And Brady's ham. That family ham. Oh, yeah. This is just so cool, so cool. You know something, people? I know I keep calling myself a dickhead, right? But I am a dickhead. I'm, told, it's, I'm, I'm officially now a dickhead, you know why? Because I'm on the N6 motorway heading towards Galway when I should be taking the M4 towards Mullingar. I'm a dickhead, I have to stay on this road now till I find a slipway. Anyway, just look up here on the left hand side, you have these road sculptures. And this road sculpture here, I think it's all to do with the different, um, what do you call it, uh, quadrants of the moon, right? See it here, look. See it in there, look. But there's, uh, there's one, of the moon, one of the moon sculptures there missing. I don't know whether someone stole it or something, but anyway, it's it's nice when you're passing by there. Uh, yeah, it's 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 one of the the nicer um, motorway sculptures. It's all the different cycles of the moon. How do you call it? Not quadrants, cycles of the moon. Right. I don't know how far I have to go here before I, I can find the slipway on the M6. See, I'm not going to Galway. 
I don't know why I took the M6 towards Galway, but I should be taking the M4. Oh. Uh, anyway, we'll get there, my friends. We'll get there. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Right, people. I have to consult Susan here to get directions now to Mullingar. The Belvedere House, sorry. Shit, I haven't got the... I haven't got my Wi-Fi set to the phone. I had it to the house. Okay. Now we're talking. Belvedere House. 100 toward Brookfield. Thank you, Susan. Thanks. Susan's great, isn't she? She's just great. They just say that I'm 14 minutes away now, right? So, um, I'll follow Susan's instructions here, my friends. Okay? See you all over there now. I'm delighted now that I made that mistake and going on the M6 because uh, it's bringing me on lovely country roads here, which is cool. Love these roads. Love them. A little farm in there. Oh, look at the lovely trees over there, isn't that gorgeous? people welcome to Belvedere House and Gardens in County Westmead very very close to Mullingar town okay so let's go and um, explore Bel Belvedere House okay People, welcome to Belvedere House. So we're heading over that direction here, that old ruin there, right? So it's just saying here, discover the Georgian home of the wicked Earl. Wander through Victorian Wall Garden, relax on the shores of Loch Ennell, hear the stories of Belvedere House, right? So I'll tell you the story about this guy here now uh, in a minute, okay? Look at the lovely tree here, isn't it gorgeous? And the lake's just out there, beyond them trees there. Right, people, welcome to v Belvedere House and Gardens, right? So look at this ruin here, right? Now, what would you think this was part of? A big abbey or something? Uh, a big cathedral or something or whatever, right? Or, or, a, or a part of a big, big house or something, right? Uh, actually, it's not. It's actually a folly, right? It's a folly. Um, the guy who owned Belvedere House here, I'll tell you the story with this here now. I'll read it, read it off the information sign here. It's, it's, it's mad, mad stuff. Right, so. It's called, they call it the, gel, the jealous wall, okay? A jealous wall, right? A jealous wall for a jealous man, right? 
So a jealous wall for a jealous man. Robert Rochford I, Earl of Belvedere, became known as the Wicked Earl. His brother George built near nearby Tuttenham House, then called Rochford House, but its back was facing Belvedere. This infuriated the Earl, who promptly built this structure to block his view. And it was designed by Thomas Wright to look like a ruin. After nearly 300 years, it is still standing. Uh, when a 10 metre section collapsed in 19 1991, the wall was found to have shallow foundations, so work was done to strengthen and protect it. It remains the largest folly in Ireland. <laughs> Isn't that mad? Isn't that mad? You hear of like families falling out of one another, but he built this here so that his brother, living in another big house over this way, couldn't look in on his property. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> crazy stuff. So it's, it's the largest folly in the whole of Ireland. But uh, he just built it so that his brother couldn't look in. And probably didn't want to build this a big, big, massive wall that would look ugly. So he, 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 he got this design. Oh my God. Ali, right, let's go over to the house here, right? So it's it's um, a Georgine style house, this house. Um, let's just read here about this house. Charles Brinsley Marley loved the grounds at Belvedere House. He built these terraces in the late 1880s to capture a stunning view of the lake. 12 stone lines were added in the early 20th century. Brinsley Marley spent many hours planning the 60 metre long rockery to the side of the terraces, one of Ireland's finest, which he filled with beautiful shrubs and fern. He also built the walled garden nearby to designs by Frederick H.C. Pantaeanius. It supplied fresh flowers, fruit, and vegetables for the house. Yeah, so that was the big rockery here, one of Ireland's finest. Not very fine anymore, is it? It's a huge big rockery all down there. We're getting ready for some big event here at the end of the month, I think. So, um, yeah, that's a pity because you see over here, look, this is an old tree and I can't get in near it now because it got all blocked off, right? It's a sculpture of, it, to me, it looks like a king um, with his sword and um, it's brilliant. And there's a little seat beside that you can sit down on. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that there? Right, so this, the information sign here, it's a pity now, because normally you can walk right up, up to that sculpture there, that wood sculpture, right? But because they're doing this big event at the weekend or something, or next week, at the end of the month, um, this fence is here. But the Lake of Kings, so it's, I'm just trying to read this here, it's saying, a thousand years ago, King Malachy's fort could be seen on Crow Innes Island, here on Loch Ennell. He was the High King of Ireland and successor to Brian Boru. Malachy was a member of the royal dynasty known as the Clan Colmain, who ruled this region for centuries. This sculpture honours Malachy, who lived, died and was buried on the island in 1022. So that's, that's, that sculpture is of King Malachy, okay? Very, very good. And it's, it's a brilliant sculpture, my friends. Look at this, look. Isn't it fantastic? Look at that class tree, isn't it gorgeous? Look at that. Wow.
Right, so this here was a picnicking area, right? It's saying the octag octagonal gazebo is another of Belvedere's follies. It was often used for summer picnics at which guests would enjoy the finest of foods, drink and drink, waited on by servants. Once panelled with wood on the walls, floor and ceilings, the gazebo overlooks Loch Ennell, a view which is now obscured by trees. There's a black and white kind of picture of it. Yeah, and do you know the Jenna's wall I was telling you there about the two brothers, right? Well, just look at this picture here, right? So this is Belvedere House. That's the folly. And this is the other house. This was his brother's house. And because he didn't want him, his brother, looking in on his property, he built this, this, this uh, wall. Crazy stuff, my friends, crazy stuff. You see, you know, like the British Empire, like they, you know, really rules like Mount of the World, right? But, uh, you know, Ireland, as I said, 700 years occupation, I'm going to call it, and they had all this, they had all, they, all these big estates all over Ireland were all big landlords, the gentry, and the Irish were peasants working for them. But that's how it goes, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? King of the castle and all that crap. Hello, line. No, I do, I, you know something? What I find amazing, I know I keep saying this all the time, but there's, there's like that stone, stone line, right? And somebody made that line out of stone, out of a rock. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'd never think of that, never. I'd look at a big, big rock, in, you know, in the mountain or something and think, there's a big rock on a mountain, sure, what can you do with that? Do you know what I mean? Like, and people can make things and carve things with their hands, you know what I mean? And it's just amazing, like, you know what I mean? And it all comes from in here, your imagination. You know what I mean? Fantastic. here it's just incredible incredible my friends fantastic It's mad the way the weather, weather, you know, one day to the next day is different. Because the last time I was over here, <clears throat> the lake here was like, it was, so, it was so smooth, it was like silk, you know? And now it's a bit choppy. And, and, and there was swans here the last, last day, it was over as well, you know? Super cool. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just walking up here, right? And you know me, you're looking around. and. I just I got a fright. I thought it was someone in the tree, right? Well, there is something in the tree. Look, someone put a troll thing in the tree, look. <laughs> He's not, he, he, he doesn't look very happy, does he? Looks kind of a bit, uh, what would you call it? 
I don't know, ugly or something. But anyway, yeah, I got a fright there for a second. The boards here are, as I just said, they're incredible. They're singing all the time. Um, like, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm amazed by great singers in the world. Pop singers, you know, jazz singers, opera singers or whatever. There's so something you go, my, wow. I, I go, fantastic talent, right? Well, personally, you listen to a big chorus here of boards, or even an orchestra, right? A live orchestra. It's fantastic. It kind of, the hair stands up in the back of your neck, you know what I mean? You kind of go, wow. That's, that's amazing, right? But coming through this woodland here, on this footpath around the perimeter of Belvedere House, it's probably not picking it up on the microphone here, right? But the sounds of the boards, all different boards singing to one another, or calling to one another is just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. There's a big building over there. I don't know if that's a hotel over there or what. Look, see it over the distance. It's a big place over there anyway. Yeah, the boards. The boards here is just fantastic. And for free, for free, you know. Amazing. I'm just looking at, uh, into this field here, right? Now, there's that big, I think it's a hotel over there, could be wrong on that. And then there's cows in another field over there. And this field here, parts of it just kind of rushes in it, so it's probably a bit swampy here in this field, right? But the rest of the field you can see, lovely trees in the hill, right? But the pasture, it's full of buttercups, right? Here the birds. Yeah, so it's full of buttercups, right? And you see, if you were if the farmers were spreading fertilizer in the fields, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see those buttercups. So that means they're not they're not spreading anything in the field, and it's just an abundance of buttercups, and it's gorgeous. Look at the way that tree there is leaning out towards the field. It's a lovely, isn't it? Gorgeous. So it's saying Gothic arch to the right. Right, so you can go up here and have a look at this Gothic arch, right? Oh, just look at the way the sun, can you see there, look? See the sun just dappling through the trees here, the light coming in. Oh, it's just, it's just fantastic, fantastic.
So this is the Gothic Arch, another folly actually. Wow, look at that design just there, look. That's mad, isn't it? Now there's two kind of window arches here, two little small windows on top. Two smaller, I don't know what the window's there or what. But that there is a bit, I've never seen anything like that. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of your man. You know your man out in, uh, went to uh, Barcelona. Now I've never been to Barcelona, but is it Gaudi or, uh, you know all that mad kind of weird kind of architecture in Barcelona that he, that he created. It reminds me of that, you know. Anyway, what's to say here? An artificial grotto of the antique rune kind, supposed to be the abode of an anchorite, anchorite a religious recluse. Okay. Um, when you look at the Gothic arch, you might imagine that a face was watching the comings and goings at Belvedere House. In fact, its designer was Thomas Wright, who often hid faces in his buildings. Like the jealous wall, also designed by Wright, it is another folly built to lend an atmosphere of mystery to the estate. Look, see them there now. Look, I'll just continue in there, and that's all because there's no fertilizer spread spread you know, along here, of course. But I love to see fields, farmers' fields. They don't put fertilizer in them, and they're just it's a, it's a profusion of buttercups, and it's just so picturesque, you know. Look at these wildflowers here. These are kind of a pinkish, probably kind of you, you would regard them as a weed, but look, aren't they lovely? Look, see the little petal on them. I don't know, can you see that there now? Um, but anyway, see that? Like that's not a weed, or sorry, that's not a flower you buy in the shop. That's an actual wild, you, they would regard it as a weed, but it's gorgeous. information about the wall garden I'm going to go into now right so it's saying the wall garden was create, created by Charles Brinsley Marley in the 1850s to provide fruit vegetables and flowers for the house protected by high walls and shelter belts of trees the wall garden created a microclimate in which an extensive range of fruit and vegetable crops and cut flowers could grow in 1901 the garden was described in the Gardener's Chronicle as containing some fine herbaceous plants thriving to such perfection that some were scarcely recognisable. Mr Ballis the Gardener has got a nice collection in which he takes a great interest. Orchids are grown in two convenient houses and the plants look healthy and strong. In the early 20th century at least 10 gardeners walked at Belvedere. You know see this is what I'm saying to you, this is the I'm not, no, I'm not anti-British at all. I mean, there's, there was empires all over the world, right? You know, throughout, throughout, throughout time, you know what I mean? Because we could sit here, stand here and name them all day, right? So I'm not anti-British or anything like that. But this is the spoils of when you go and you conquer a country. You know, you, you take everything 
you know, it's, 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 it's like raiding the country, do you know what I mean? It's like raiding and taking all their wealth from us, right? And so all the English, big English landlords and everyone to call them, were brought over here and given all this, all this land, all carved up for them, and they lived the high life, you know what I mean? Not only in Ireland, in other places in the world too. Look at it, look what they've done in India and all over the place, you know what I mean? But, do you get my point? So, what you're looking at here is like, when England ruled Ireland and they had all these fantastic big estates, thousand acres of estates and um, for all their gentry, so-called gentry. Anyway, welcome to the Wall Garden, maintained by horticultural students. Beautiful tree there, isn't it? You know something, right? I often wonder, who were the dickheads who, who named plants and flowers like? Could you imagine, imagine sitting down and having your breakfast with people like this, look, who, who, who call the plant by this name, look, see this fern here, right? Dryopteris Wallisiana. Himalayas, Hawaii, Mexico and Jamaica. So you'll find him in, in him, the Himalayas, Hawaii, Mexico and Jamaica. You know, like, that's what I'm saying. Who's the dickhead that names plants or the dickheads? Let me see, what's this one here now? Look at this here now, this is called, okay, there's a simple name, Bella Etolia, Hydrangeaceae, Philadelphus, Philadelphus, is it? Philadelphus. Ah, oh. mad stuff, my friends, mad stuff. Oh, this is gorgeous, look at this, isn't this gorgeous here, look at this, beautiful. Try pronouncing this for a, for a mouthful, my friends. Look, Fab Fabacea, right? Paracerentius lophantia, Australia, right? Do you see what I mean? <laughs> now that's just to me, my friends. That is just pure bullshit. Bullshit. You see, that is one, another one of the things that annoys me about people. You know, there's a certain group of people who I regard as they're just, they're up their own arse, if you know what I mean. Uh, artists, some artists, uh, fashion designers being other, and people who name flowers. <laughs> yes, that's a, a pair of deepy apalopagluculos. You know what I mean? Anyway. I just got talking to a nice woman there. And she's talking about all the plants here. And she's saying, like, you know, that in her own garden. <laughs> Uh, they, they don't come out as, as, as good as this, or she plants something and they die. And I was saying, yeah, but say, you don't see the sign back there, say, this is, it's uh, uh, horticultural students are looking after this. So they know all about plants and what to, what soil and how to enrich the soil, enrich the different plants and flowers and stuff, you know. But anyway, look at some of these flowers here. Look at that one there now. Isn't that just gorgeous? I don't know what that is, actually. I actually have that at home, but what's this? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, yeah, I would love, no, there's no big mad sign on that one. Now that's not a bad name, 
Nandina Domestica, Richmond. So what's this, is it? And there's one Melintus Major, money flower. So put that in your back garden if you're rich, it makes loads of money for you. The money flower. Now look at this tiny flower, it's so tiny, but at the same time it's so beautiful. It's not, look at it, see, look at it, the stem is really, really, uh, what do you call it, delicate. But look at the tiny little flower on it, isn't it gorgeous? It's like a little bell shaped flower, and it's beautiful. Right, just going to read about this bear, bear here to you, right? So, from 1912, Belvedere House was owned by Charles Howard Bory, an intrepid explorer. During his travels in Kazakhstan, he rescued a three-week-old bear, cub, by buying it from some hunters. He called it a goo, and it became his constant companion. He even brought it back to Belvedere House, where he would wrestle with it in the gardens. Agu eventually went to live in Dublin Sioux until the late 1950s. Mad, isn't it? Agu. Well, um, did you enjoy that, my friends? Because I did. Uh, yeah, so if you come here, for an adult it's um, 8 euros, I forget what it is for uh, a child, right, but anyway, it's 8 euros for an adult. So look, just look, look at this, this folly here, look. Look at the walk that went into that. Mad stuff. Jealous butter. Just because his butter had a house over in this direction here, and he didn't want him looking in on his property. Oh, shit in hell. Families, huh? So it was happening back then too. There's a great book you should read called uh, Families, They Fuck You Up. It's very good actually. So here's lakes here. Yeah, so that's, that's Lake Enel. And that's Loch Owl. Sorry, Loch Enel and Loch Owl. Very good. Love the fence. Fantastic. I think it's time to take this jumper off me, I think. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the fold up chair out of the back of my car, bring my flask and my last two sandwiches. Just come out here somewhere and just sit and chill, okay? Well, join me, yeah? So stay tuned then, stay tuned. <laughs> right, I think it's time to have a cup of tea. Ah, oh, yeah. Bit of oven warming up there, my friends. <sighs> cheers, cheers. Oh, this is just heaven, heaven. Under these trees here, nice breeze, summer breeze, high clouds, sun is shining. Right out in the middle of the country here. I um, don't know if you can see it, see, see, the, see the distance there? There's a big house in the distance there. That was the brother of your man here. And because, because your man built that house there, this guy here built that big folly wall, so he couldn't look at him. And they were brothers. Imagine that, they were brothers. Crazy stuff, my friends, crazy stuff. Ah, this is just, this is just fantastic. Fantastic. Time for another sandwich, my friends. Time for another sandwich. Right, people, I just finished that cup of tea and two more sandwiches. So, it's amazing, right? Filling, f bringing my flask with me, um, bringing some brown bread and uh, uh, the ham sandwiches and the milk. 
So for, for those two, two pit stops there, right, that's, that's after costing me roughly about four euros. So I'm going to try now for the rest of summer to do that, right? I'm not being miserable, I'm just kind of, I spent something like 70 or 80 euros on food down in Kilkenny. So I just said, that, that's, that's, that's ridiculous, you know what I mean? So anyway, this is far more enjoyable. On, under these trees here, look, look, look where I'm at. Look at the fields here, buttercups in them, trees, the lake out there, another tree, and a big mound of trees here behind me. So yeah, so um, yeah, you're just sitting here, no one's thinking, I'm going to tell you something a bit mad here now. You will definitely think I'm screwball, right? I was just thinking, see all these trees here, right? Now, right, so there's, there's loads of trees around here, this little kind of circle on the hill here, right? And I love trees, right? But could you imagine if you were a tree, but you had, the, you had a human mind, okay? Now just bear with me for a minute, right? So, especially with my mind anyway. So, you can't move, this is it, this is your life, your whole of your life is, you have to stand in one position for the whole of your life, surrounded by all these trees, right? But there's a snag here, you see. The tree in me right here, I can't stand him. He's a dickhead tree, right? He just he gets on my nerves. I, I, I want to get a million miles away from him. I can't stand him, right? Then I turn around. The trees over this side here, they're all born again trees. They're Allah trees, they're Hindu trees or whatever. And they're spending the whole time trying to convert me to the tree god and telling me what I have to do in order to get into the kingdom of the tree god, right? Or so they're wrecking me goddamn head, right? And then I turn over this way here, and all these goddamn trees here are all from the fundamental positivity brigade, right? And they're just waiting for me to speak and make a sentence so they can pounce on me and say to me with our uh, condescending uh, voices, oh no, that was negative, that was negative, you've got to be more positive, right? And I can't move to strangle them, right? And my branches are grown over into Dickhead's tree. And Dickhead's tree, his branches are coming over into my tree. And I, I can't get away. I'm cracked up. I'm, I'm stuck between um, born again trees, fundamental positivity brigade trees, and I've no stimulation, right? It's driving me bonkers, right? And then I look outside this little round mound here and I see Miss Sexy Tree over here, see? So this is Miss Sexy Tree. So we see Miss Sexy Tree over here, right? And she spots me and I can spot her. I fancy her, I know she fancies me too, right? But I can't hop like a kangaroo over to her and chat her up and have a little bit of copulation, right? Or nothing. And I'm stuck here with all them, these wanker trees all around me doing me head in and I can't escape from them. And the only thing I'm wishing for is a big, big storm to come so that I can fall down and be dead, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, that's just a stupid thought I was thinking here, sitting under these trees, you know. Love trees, but I could not be a tree. I could not be a tree standing in the one spot for the whole of my life. You know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm at home for more than a day, I feel like I'm in prison. If I'm in Ireland for more than a year or two, I feel like I'm in prison. Do you know what I mean? Like so. Anyway, that's my thought on the tree, on being a tree. Look, there's my little uh, fold-up chair. Ah, right, people. So anyway, you probably think I'm bonkers, but I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit, my friends. You tell me who's saying. Tell me. Tell me who's saying. There's nobody saying. Anyway, listen. That's it from lovely uh, Belvedere House in County Westmead. If you take the M4 motorway from Dublin, yeah, it's, you'd, you'd be over here in about an hour, right? So, um, yeah, it's eight euros admittance, but it's well worth it. I really, really enjoyed that walk through the, uh, the perimeter of the wood and all the birds chirping and singing. It was just, it was just lovely. So, that's it, my friends. I don't know where my next video is coming from, but it's going to come from somewhere. So stay tuned and press the notification bell 
so that you know when my next video is up. And anybody that's new, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a million, and I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye.